Morning pen friends, welcome to the world of Panda Pen Club, Club, where it is always morning, meaning it's always ripe with possibility and potential. Today, I want to show you a pen of shimmering potential and genuine cause of excitement online among some of you in the fountain pen community. Today's pen is the Fuliwen 017, which, well, you can immediately see why it's caused something of a stir. It's hard to miss. It's a big old thing. It's made from gorgeous, impactful acrylic. The model we got here is purple. The purple model is called Harbour, Harbour Sunset. It's also available in blue, blue, blue shimmeriness called Blue Danube, and green, which is called Starry Night. But here we have the Harbour Sunset. And in addition to the acrylic, before you get anywhere near the nib or the writing experience, you have this chap, this removable This, re <laughs> this removable roll stop ornament, this gorgeous little snake. And this made me think a little bit about Chinese fountain pens and how my interest in Chinese fountain pens relates to the rest of, of the world's fountain pen production and, and it's interesting that in the Western Christian culture that I grew up in, the snake always has a negative associate. Well, I say Western Christian, I, I could say Western Indiana Jones culture equally effectively. I always grew up with negative associations attached to slithering snakes. And I suppose that's been entrenched worldwide now by by J.K. Rowling and, and Slytherin House. But in China, things are maybe a little different. Perspectives are a little different. And sometimes it's hard, for, hard to grasp at first when you first visit China or you first try to relate yourself to China in some way. The fact that it is indeed a, a separate civilization to one my own that that coexists and again I, I sort of thought in my own upbringing and my education and school quite you know quite far through school what was always impressed on me was a message of my culture being being the only civilization that was currently relevant I was studying ancient Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, and almost viewing them through a telescopic lens and, and uh, through the, the comfort of a historian's armchair kind of thing, <laughs> which is a quite a fanciful metaphor to describe a little kid. But, <laughs> but my point is, I was... I, I was not encouraged to study civilizations that coexisted with my own. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but that seems to be my recollection. And it attests to how sort of what a, an interesting little shift it is when you realize that one of the great joys and one of the things that you must accept about China and Chinese culture and its reality is that it is entirely separate and it and in in it on on a certain level and it exists according to its own rules which have been at times fiercely guarded over a long history all of which comes from my negative associations towards a snake and and the relatively positive associations felt towards a snake in Chinese culture. 
There are four, there are four great folk tales in Chinese culture. And one of them is called The Legend of the White Snake. This involves a little boy going to a bridge and buying a biscuit from a vendor. But he's not really a vendor, he's an immortal in disguise. And he's, in fact, for unknown reasons, peddling immortality pills in the form of these little biscuits to this boy. The boy eats them. Then three days later, he comes back to the vendor and he asks him why he's not been hungry in the last three days. And the vendor rather chaotically responds by laughing his head off and grabbing the boy by the ankles, shaking him upside down over the bridge they're on. And the boy vomits the biscuits and everything else, I suppose, into the lake. And there in the lake is a white serpent who has been practicing magical arts for quite some time, it seems. And this, this white serpent eats some of the immortality biscuits. And she gains 500 years of magical powers as a result. She is being observed in this by a terrapin or turtle who's also been practicing magical arts but doesn't get any of the biscuits and is absolutely furious. And the rest of the rather extended folktale involves the snake becoming a woman, leaving the lake, falling in love with the original boy and the terrapin leaving the lake. Years later, furious, still turning himself into a monk and their huge battle for supremacy, him executing his vendetta and the white snake, trying to use her magical powers and the loyalty she's built with them to save her little husband. So quite an encouraging tale that maybe would make you look on snakes with a certain perhaps inadvisable fondness. Anyway, enough of that. There is a snake on this pen, and this pen comes from China, and this snake maybe means something different there to what it might mean here, and that's rather wonderful. The world is full of colour. So, back to our pen, back strictly to our pen. It's a screw cap. The threads are acrylic. It posts, but the writing experience when posted is somewhat unbalanced in my opinion. The cap is beautifully machined out. I do love seeing acrylic machined like this. It just looks wonderful to me. We have a, well it looks like a big old nib, it's number six. People are, people are already experimenting, changing this about, and it's very easy, in fact, to unscrew the nib from the section without a huge amount of trouble and maybe some slightly inky fingers, but not a great deal to worry about. And there you have your nib carefully extracted from your gorgeous acrylic tube. and back into the section assembly with a spectacular harvest of ink all over my, my already inky fingers, so it's not a great deal of trouble. There we are. One thing I will say about this pen is it's, it's not actually as long as some of my other, it's not as long as a king of pen, for example, but it has a great deal of girth, this bit, but more relevantly, this bit. For me, anyway, when I'm writing with this pen, it sits back in the crook of my hand, and the crook of my hand isn't quite used to such a, such a magnificently 
wide object sitting there. So it does feel a little strange. Add to that the, the 0 0.7 millimeter medium nib. And you have, well, an object that can feel, despite its iridescent beauty and its rich and colorful cultural significance, maybe a little unwieldy, a little unwieldy in the hand. The thickness, or rather the girth or diameter of the shaft and this, this sort of slightly generous proportions of the, the nib tip uh, give, end up giving me that, that sensation. Nonetheless, if you're looking for a big pen, and, and it's wonderful to own big pens. There, there's something very specifically enjoyable about big oversized pens, and, and there's a, certainly a market for them. A lot of people enjoy them. I do. Uh, this is a this is a splendid addition to a collection along those lines. It will sit alongside, I don't know, a 149 or a Sailor King of Pens, and it'll definitely it'll definitely rub shoulders with them comfortably in terms of its proportions. In terms of its performance, it's a little a little a little less precise. A little blunter and a, and and a little bit more of a, of a handful, I suppose. But nonetheless, it's a gorgeous object and a magnificent addition to any collection. It's very difficult to get hold of at this precise moment, anyway. I know that uh, Pen BBS have something mildly similar named the 486 and they however have a have a cat on theirs and the cat is not removable and I'm not going to tell you any stories about cats so you're in luck I would I would I would recommend this pen not as a daily writer not as Not as a, as a pen necessarily that you would use for any specific practical purpose, but then I don't need to tell you that. Just look at it. This is, a, this is an object to beam at and enjoy. And on that basis, I can very strongly recommend it to you. This is the writing sample section of my review for the Fuller one. 017 snake. So let's get started. Remove our little roll slip. Place it on your little finger if, if so inclined. Or, yeah, that's the only one it'll fit on. But look at it. Unscrew the cap. And let's go. Fool of one. most comfortable thing to do to write with a little snake on your finger. Zero, one, seven, snake. Now, as I mentioned in my review, the nib is pretty smooth and pretty wet. Just with these occasional, occasional issues for me with my grip allowing the nib to kind of flirt off the paper a little bit. So sometimes when it, it appears when I'm doing certain flourishes and you might see it as I scratch out this sentence. No, not, not at all there. But occasionally my, my grip turns and, and I lose the sweet spot for this pen. That's, that's the only issue I have, which you could call a 
apparently linked to it, but it's more to do with my handling of the pen than the than the ink flow itself or anything to do with the feed. It's there we go again. It's smooth, but not in a way I like. It's smooth. It runs across the page a bit like your teeth run through an avocado, if that makes any sense. It's got a sort of a sort of greased smoothness, greased lightning. <laughs> no, it's it's more like a sort of like the page has got a film of grease on it, and you get this sort of so it's not buttery smooth, it's sort of not giving the kind of feedback I would enjoy, I suppose. This this uh, section stopper is is okay. It's as I mentioned in my review, the diameter of the pen makes this a little uncomfortable for me to write with. Ah, oh, there you are again, the grip issue. But that aside, I have very little to critique this oh, this nib. It, it it does it writes perfectly well. Plenty of ink flow. It's drying out a little there, but when you press, it's perfectly fine. Very little, ah, uh, you see train tracking there when I try and do a line variation. Not a, not a nib to start attacking with by means of pressure. Not a nib I would want to use anyway for long writing sessions. However, it's it's fine. It's okay, and it's it's such a such an insane and 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 unique looking pen. Such a wonderful pen to own. It's great fun to use, nonetheless. 